Coming in at number 10 we have the Dybuck Box. A normal object turned supernatural turned cursed. What a journey. The Dybuck Box is said to be a haunted wine cabinet filled with a restless spirit. Interestingly the wine cabinet had a Jewish prayer carved into the back of it which is maybe what attracted the ghoul. The spirit in question is allegedly a holocaust survivor, Haveka, who escaped to Spain. The box was famously sold on eBay in 2003 and has spent the past 16 years bouncing between owners who don't want it and I can understand why. It seems each owner has fallen on horrifying misfortune and suffered reoccurring nightmares. One owner suffered a stroke shortly after receiving the box as a gift. Apparently the box has now been hidden by Jewish rabbis, thank goodness. The box actually has a connected film with it, The Possession which came out in 2012, I think it was based on the wine box events. The cursed mirror of Myrtle's plantation breaks onto this list at number 9. The Myrtle's plantation is believed to be one of the most haunted places in the entire world. But one of the most haunted items on the premises has to be this cursed mirror. The mirror was brought into the home back in 1980 and according to the legend the mirror contains the spirit of Sarah Woodruff and her children who were poisoned to death by a slave on the plantation. It is said that whenever a family member dies, you're supposed to cover up all the mirrors so that the spirits don't get trapped or lost. Well I guess this family missed that memo. Guests at the plantation have complained about seeing figures lurking in the mirror and a child sized handprints on the glass. Take a look at these pictures and see if you can spot the ghost or handprint in the mirror. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to be getting rid of all my mirrors tonight. Coming in at number 8 we have the Bassano vase. At first the Bassano vase is a sight to behold, it's a beautifully carved silver vase from the 15th century, it's an antique. But as it's on this list you may have realised that actually it's a supernatural antique with a curse. Hurrah! The story goes that the vase was made for an Italian wedding as a gift to the bride who is to be wed in a traditional ceremony in Napoli. On her wedding night she was excited. But unfortunately an intruder broke in and stabbed her. She was found bleeding to death clutching the vase. The legend has it that she promised to return and seek vengeance on the person who stopped her marrying her love. After her death the vase was passed down through the family but anyone who came in contact with it mysteriously fell ill or they were met with serious misfortune. Following that the vase was wrapped up and packed away but unfortunately it was unearthed again hundreds of years later in the late 80s when it also started making headlines for continuing its spate of deadly bad luck. Newspaper reports indicate that the vase was buried again in an undisclosed location, hoping that it would stay out of the way with human contact forever this time. Coming in at number 7 we have the evil eye. Ah the curse of the evil eye. Although actually this is an interesting twist at this point because these objects actually protect against curses. The evil eye is a curse cast by a malevolent and malicious glare given to a person when they aren't looking. If an evil eye is cast upon you you are susceptible to injury or misfortune. It could even mean that you're set upon by animals. To protect yourself from the evil eye usually people carry a talisman with an eye on it which in themselves look pretty terrifying but actually they're there to stare down a curse. The evil eye has been incorporated into a lot of protective objects, most popularly jewellery. Also there are a lot of evil eye wall hangings and wind chimes. I feel like I'd quite like an evil eye bracelet so it can stare down a few evil eyes that have been looking my way way recently like bah, reflected curse. Coming in at number 6 we have cursed tarot cards. Tarot cards are used in divination for forecasting rather than predicting. Usually a person formulates a question and seeks an answer from the cards, a deck of 78 individual cards with different meanings. The most famous cards are death, the tower and the devil, all thought to be bad omens. But of course that depends on your interpretation. Some people are convinced that their tarot decks can become cursed and that everything that's forecast will actually happen badly. There is also a superstition that burning tarot cards will bring a curse upon you. It seems that the only way to be rid of a cursed deck of tarots is to drown them, soak them all face down in water. Honestly, I'm not so sure about that. I think they work by energy, so if you have bad energy, maybe you'll get bad cards. Coming in at number 5 we have Maori masks. Maori is the name of the indigenous people of New Zealand and Polynesia. Masks are made to honour their ancestors and they're often beautifully carved and slightly intimidating to look at. The masks are thought to contain the souls of warriors who died in battle, so pretty supernatural and ghostly if you ask me. While men are fine to be going around touching a Maori mask, 
females have a much more uncertain time. Legend has it you should never seek out a Maori mask if you're pregnant or menstruating because you could invoke an ancient curse. In October 2010, a museum in New Zealand made headlines when it told a pregnant woman to stay away from the sacred artifacts. Speaking of sacred, at number 4 we have Uluru. Is a rock formation an object? Either way, I'm putting it on this list. Uluru or Ayers Rock is both sacred and cursed, if the stories are to be believed. The large sandstone monolith in the Northern Territory of Central Australia is sacred to Aboriginal tribes, the first people of the land. They believe that it is inhabited by the ancestral spirits of the land. The rock started forming 550 million years ago, and it's believed that if a visitor takes a rock from the spot, they will suffer serious misfortune, sometimes even grave misfortune. There have been reports of people returning stones that they've taken from Ayers Rock to try and end their suffering. Shouldn't be taking the rocks in the first place. Coming in at number 3 we have the Terracotta Army. I kind of believe that the Terracotta Army have an air of the supernatural about them. They were after all a work of funeral art that were buried with the purpose of protecting an emperor in the afterlife. The thousands of Terracotta figures were buried with the first emperor of China in 210 BCE, but they were rediscovered by local farmers thousands of years later in 1974 in Yang Village's rural land. For them though, the discovery was actually a curse. The government didn't pay them well for their findings, and then they took their land and their homes off them in order to build a tourist center. The government made a lot of money, they didn't. One of the farmers who discovered the soldiers actually killed himself, and the others were met with bad luck, many of whom have died penniless. Coming into number two, whatever you do, do not touch the demon book. The Book of Soiga is an early 16th century treatise on demonology written in Latin. There are only two copies of the book in the world known to us, and one was possessed by the Elizabethan scholar John Dee. Dee spent his life trying to interpret the text, which was filled with spells and rituals. He had a good understanding of what was happening, apart from the final 36 pages, which he just couldn't decipher. He and his trusted friend, Edward Kelly, summoned the spirit of Uriel to tell them the meaning of the last pages. The legend says that Uriel then possessed Kelly and spoke through through him. He claimed that the book came into existence when Adam entered paradise and that it could only be properly interpreted by the archangel Michael himself. He also said that whoever deciphers the meaning of the last 36 pages will be destined to die two and a half years later. Why two and a half? We don't know, but I wouldn't want to be reading that book. Finally, coming into number one, we have the Delhi Purple Sapphire. Also known as the Gem of Sorrow, the Delhi Purple Sapphire was housed in a sacred temple in India, the temple of Indra in Kampur. Indra, by the way, is the Hindu god of war and thunderstorms. Amid the British led turmoil in India, it wasn't uncommon for soldiers to loot sacred temples, stealing their jewels and smuggling them back to Britain. This is exactly what happened with the purple sapphire in question. Colonel W. Ferris took it back to England, only to be met with terrible, terrible luck. Financial misfortunes befell him. His family got very sick. Things started to fall apart. He gave the stone away, and the person who who received it committed suicide. The next owner of the sapphire was Edward Heron Allen, who was also met with really bad luck. He bound the stone with silver and attached two scarab beetles, and it seemed like the bad luck was contained. However, his dreams were frequently haunted by Hindu yogis until he gave the stone away. The stone then was returned to him, so he threw it in Regent's Canal in London. No prizes for guessing that actually it came back. The story continues over another hundred or so years. More recently, it found its way to a museum, and one night the museum curator was travelling with the stone, only to be injured by a terrible storm with his wife. Coming up in our number 10 spot, we have the Myrtle's Plantation Mirror. Myrtle's Plantation is a place in St. Francisville, Louisiana, that is known for being extremely haunted. There are so many ghost sightings and photographs, and in particular, there is a mirror where people tend to see ghosts in. People believe that the mirror holds the spirits of a mother and her young ones that passed away in the home. Apparently, a handprint continues to appear in one of the corners of the mirror, even though it continues to be wiped away by staff. Whoa! The mirror is definitely haunted 
and cursed. In our number nine spot, we have the Kohinoor diamond. The Kohinoor diamond has been said to be cursed for centuries, but more specifically for males. It is said that only God or women can wear it with impunity. All else who wears it will be cursed. It is said to bring about great wealth to all women and great, great misfortune to all men. It dates back thousands of years, but it is currently in the hands of the British royal family, and it has been worn by Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth. I wonder how people started thinking that the crown was cursed. I bet you some woman, thousands of years ago, was mad at her husband and convinced him that the crown was cursed so she could have it all to herself. <laughs> Like they say, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. In our number eight spot, we have The Crying Boy. This is a painting of a boy that is crying that is said to be haunted. I had never heard of it before today, but apparently this painting is widely known around the world and on the internet as possibly being cursed. The painting is literally of a boy that's really crying, like a waterfall of tears is falling down his face. I could see why people would feel something when looking at it as the energy is quite strong and of course sad. Anyways, regardless, this painting was made by a Spanish artist named Giovanni Bragolin and the painting was actually mass produced after the war in England and also so many homes caught on fire after purchasing this painting and the painting seemingly survived each time. People believed it to be cursed because, well, the painting never burned down with the houses. But many years later, the paintings were analyzed and it was proven that they had been coated with a fire repellent. It still doesn't explain all of the fires in the first place. Like, why were there so many fires after people purchased this painting? So that's why people are still very weary on this painting and believe it to be cursed. In our number seven spot, we have the Delphi Purple Sapphire. This stone is also known as the Cursed Amethyst because it's probably cursed and you should probably not touch it. This stone was apparently stolen from the Temple of Indra in 1857 and then brought to England by Colonel W. Ferris. It is said that after this, he lost all of his fortune and received an enormous amount of bad luck. Any person after him that came into contact with the stone came upon some bad luck. Allegedly, a singer lost her voice after having the stone. Whoa. It now rests in the London Natural History Museum, and even the person that brought it there said they experienced a horrible storm while en route. Coincidence? I think not. In our number six spot, we have the Hope Diamond. So many cursed jewels in the world, it almost, almost makes you believe in the possibility that it can hold energy. But wait, everything is energy, so of course it can. We could probably go down a rabbit hole here, but whatever, I'm gonna stop myself. Anyways, the Hope Diamond is a large blue gemstone that is worth approximately $250 million. This is one of the most known cursed jewels around the world, as it has reportedly caused great misfortune and misery to whomever wears it. The reportings of misfortune date all the way back to 1653 in India, when a French merchant took the gem from one of the eyes of a Hindu idol, and eventually this merchant was eaten to death by dogs. Misfortune may be an understatement in this case. It's a good thing most of us will never get anywhere close to this object in our lifetime. <laughs> In our number five spot, we have the Blarney Stone. This is a stone located in Cork, Ireland, and it is believed to be quite powerful. Kissing the stone is said to bring a person luck. But if there is any removal of the stone, you know, even by taking a few pieces of the stone, the person who has removed it will be cursed with bad luck. Misfortunes such as loss of jobs, financial lows, and depression have been reported and associated with those that have taken parts of the stone. Apparently these parts that have been taken have been mailed back after they have felt the wrath of this curse. That's pretty funny when you think about it. <laughs> you would think mailing it wouldn't do any good unless there's someone there to put the stone back. I doubt there's some kind of employee that's you know unwrapping people's mail and putting the pieces of the stone back and if there is such a person, even if they're a volunteer, bless them. <laughs> In our number four spot we have Elmo. Yes, Elmo, the character from one of the most iconic shows called Sesame Street, is known to be a cursed doll. Honestly, <laughs> I heard about this one and instantly 
it, it checked out for me because my brother had an Elmo doll and it would just start talking randomly and we totally thought it was haunted. So it's comforting to know that other people had strange occurrences with it. Apparently there is a story about a boy that loved Elmo and was gifted it and a few days after receiving it, the Elmo started saying, kill James, continuously. Whew, that's horrifying. <laughs> Definitely stay away from the Elmo doll, just saying. In our number three spot, we have a piece of all Yuru rock. Yet another cursed rock to stay away from. This is a large sandstone rock formation in the North Territory, Australia, and apparently this place is sacred for the indigenous people of the area. They advise that no one should take anything from the site, no small rocks or pieces or anything. But of course, do people always listen when told to not do something? No. The people that have taken pieces of the formation though have reported experiencing severe illness afterwards, bad luck, deaths, and terrible breakups. It feels like we've been too conditioned by movies to believe in any real magic that we forget about where writers of movies get their inspiration from. In our number two spot, we have the Belcourt Castle Chairs. There is a summer cottage in Rhode Island and apparently in the ballroom, there are a number of cursed chairs. The idea of cursed chairs just seems so silly to me. Out of all the objects in the world, why a bunch of chairs? Well, as silly as it sounds, there have been too many sightings and experiences to count that proves this theory. People have reported feeling chills up and down their spine and people have reported feeling a strange sensation of energy around them. Also, it has been reported by many, a feeling of being pushed down from the chairs by an unseen force. I kinda wanna go there and experience that. Anyone else? But I suppose if we will be forever cursed, then maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> In our number one spot, we have the haunted wedding dress. I'm sure there are many, many haunted wedding dresses around the world. Heck, I would say any marriage that ends in divorce, the wedding dress is probably not high vibes. But this one in particular from a girl named Anna Baker is known to be quite haunted. Anna Baker was from a rich family and in 1849, she fell in love with an iron worker, AKA someone of lower breeding, as they used to say, a lower class chap. <laughs> Anyways, she was forbidden to marry him and Anna had already bought her wedding dress, oh no. Allegedly, she was heartbroken and she decided that she would never marry anyone ever again and she ended up passing away single as a maid in 1914. Her house eventually became a museum and they say that her old wedding dress is haunted and many people have reportedly seen the wedding dress moving in its glass box. Yeah. It's definitely cursed. In at number 10, we have the eBay mirror. So I remember reading this story a few years ago and being absolutely fascinated. Two guys living in a shared house in Muswell Hill, London, started experiencing weird goings on when their landlord hung a mirror in the house. This mirror was reportedly found in a skip, or dumpster, right outside the property. 20 year old student Joseph Birch and 34 year old painter Sotiris Charalambus say that they were immediately met with bad feelings followed by bad luck, misery, and even sickness. Charalambus even said he woke up in the night screaming with stabbing pains. He attributed all of this horror to the mirror. Things became enough for the pair when Birch said he saw flickering shadows and glimpses of black darkness coming from the mirror. He then woke up with scratch marks all over himself. The pair put the mirror on eBay for £100 and sold it for just over the asking price. I for one would not want to own that mirror though. Okay, moving on to number nine, we have bunk beds. In 1987, a haunted bunk bed in Wisconsin became a topic of national coverage when a family dramatically fled their home in winter after reports of hauntings. Later, the TV show Unsolved Mysteries documented the paranormal activities. It all started when Alan and Debbie Tallman bought bunk beds from a secondhand shop and immediately noticed strange going on in their home in a small town of Horica. Soon, the family noticed the radio would switch on its own, and the children who slept in the bed saw 
saw an ugly old woman in their room. As things started opening and closing on their own accord in the same room as the bed, the family got their local pastor in who felt that there was a devil in the bed. After things went bad to worse, the family destroyed the bunk beds and left the house. I think they did the right thing. And now moving on to number eight, we have more craziness. We got the teddy bear. Teddy bears are supposed to be used for, you know, cuddling and comfort, not for smothering people. One teddy bear in India caused a stir on the internet in July of 2016, so it happened earlier on this year in the summertime, as footage was released on YouTube of a reportedly possessed bear. Uploader Paris Diwa captured the video in which the huge stuffed bear seems to move on its own. I mean, is this real life right now? Many YouTube viewers are questioning the authenticity of the footage, but who knows? Warning, this next haunted object has actually caused people who see the picture of it to experience shocking symptoms. Are you ready, Landon? Are we going to show them the picture? Yeah, Ooh. and there's some shocking stuff going on, so close your eyes this next one if you're scared of that kind of thing. I'm scared. Ah! In at number seven, we have Peggy. In 2015, footage of a creepy doll caused absolute chaos around the world, inciting paranormal enthusiasts with many feeling chest pains and experiencing headaches and visions after viewing the pictures or videos of her. British paranormal investigator Jane Harris, based in Shropshire, says that she was inundated with messages after images and footage of Peggy were posted on the internet. Harris runs an organisation called Haunted Dolls and was given the doll by a petrified woman. She is thought to have the power to visit people in their dreams, even haunting one woman to warn her about her cat that died the next day. Spooky. One woman even said that she had a heart attack just hours after viewing a picture of Peggy. Mediums who have worked with Peggy believe that she is linked to the Holocaust. Terrifying. Following that, now at number six, Bassano Vase. The story goes that a 15th century carved silver vase was given to an Italian bride on her wedding night in Napoli. That very evening, she was murdered and vowed to seek vengeance. After her death, it became clear that the family members that her spirit had somehow possessed the vase and caused death and misery to all those who touched it. After a period of time, the vase was buried and reportedly unearthed in 1988. The vase contained a warning note about the bad luck associated with its possession. The owner auctioned it for 4 million lira, so that's around $2,500 at the time. The new owner died and triggered a similar pattern in the new era of deaths. The vase has now been buried and you should not go looking for it. Okay, this really, really creeps me out. In at number five, we have the Anguished Man painting. To be honest, looking at this painting, I have absolutely no idea who would want to own it. It is even more terrifying than a Phoebe Buffet creation. Sean Robinson acquired the Anguished Man painting from his grandmother, who believed that the artist used part of his own blood to paint the picture. The painting is said to be haunted by the spirit of the artist, and Sean has even set up a YouTube channel to to document some of the crazy goings on surrounding the picture. This includes doors slamming and the air in the room changing to make it all cold. It is now said to be locked in the basement of Mr. Robinson's house, where I think it should stay forever, and then he should move, and no one should ever go there. Robert the doll, another doll, and this one is horrifying. Sorry, do you say another doll? Another doll. I'm out of here. There's too many dolls on this list. And as Rebecca walks off, we continue. Everybody meet Robert. Robert is a 20th century sailor doll that used to belong to Eugene Otto. Eugene used to blame many naughty things he did on Robert, and the pair would often be overheard talking. Eugene's parents assuming Robert's voice was really Eugene. When Eugene died in 1974, Robert was left in the attic and was discovered by the next owners in the home. And they had a 10 year old daughter. The small girl was terrified of Robert and claimed he wanted to kill her. Neighbors of the house would swear they saw Robert at the window on occasion and the plumber would work at the house found the doll to move across the room on its own. A reporter from the area, Malcolm Ross, visited the house to see Robert and was disturbed to sense that Robert was listening to his conversation and was understanding him. A final doll, and perhaps the scariest of them all, we have the basis for the movie The Conjuring and Annabelle. At number three, we have Annabelle the doll. Annabelle currently lives in a glass box at the Occult Museum in Monroe, Connecticut, run by Ed and Lorraine Warren. The Warrens received the doll after it lived with a student nurse and her roommate in the 1970s. The doll behaved strangely, so the pair contacted a medium who suggested she was haunted by a dead girl named Annabelle Higgins. The pair tried to nurture and care for the girl, but she turned out to be malicious and evil, leading the pair to give the doll away. 
That was a good choice. Have we finished talking about dolls? I have a feeling we're not finished. We have. I think we have. Okay. I promise me, because if not, I'm not coming back. Okay, moving on from dolls, we got. <laughs> yeah, moving on from dolls, we have Busby Stoop Chair. Mystery. Now located on the ceiling at the Thirsk Museum in North Yorkshire, the infamous Busby Stoop Chair has been linked to many deaths over the years. The story goes that a Yorkshireman named Thomas Busby, who was a fraudster and a drunkard, loved his wooden chair. In 1702, he fell in love with a young woman named Elizabeth Awity. Her father, Daniel, did not approve and came to drag Elizabeth away from their home in a local inn. As Busby arrived back in the inn, he was most offended to find Daniel Awity sitting in his favourite chair, so he murdered him. Normal reaction. As he was later tried and hung for the murder, he swore a curse that all that sit in his best chair will die. This chair ever since has been rumoured to be haunted by Busby himself. The chair stayed in the inn for years, reportedly taking the lives of 63 people who sat in it. One chimney sweep who sat in the chair while drinking at the pub was found hanged nearby the next morning, and it's said that all those who sat in the chair ever since who went to war did not come back. As late as the 1970s, two people died after sitting in the chair. Luckily it was then taken away and put in a museum and strung up on the ceiling so no one can sit in it ever again. Ok we are here at number 1. The possessed items on this list seem to have a varying degree of legitimacy, however this last one really does have an irrefutably concerning history. I can't get over this. At number 1 we have Franz Ferdinand's car. Many history buffs will know that World War 1 was triggered by the murder of Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife in Bosnia. The pair were in their luxury graph and stiffed limousine, which stalled at the very wrong moment outside a cafe from which a man who'd previously tried to assassinate him was just exiting. What a crazy coincidence. Their deaths, probably caused by the stalled car in part, were not the last tragedy to befall the limo. The car's second owner, General Potirek, went insane after driving the car and was soon committed to an asylum. Many say the car is possessed by an evil spirit. In fact, throughout the war and the period shortly after, the limo was involved in 6 accidents and 13 deaths. Why are people still driving this thing? If we are also to attribute the car as the direct cause of the death of Franz Ferdinand and thus the sparker of the first world war, it could also be directly linked to the death of 17 million people, which in turn set the stage for the death of 60 million people in world war 2. So that car has some blood on its hands. Suffice to say after a final death spree in which 5 people travelling to a wedding were killed, the car was finally donated to the war history museum of Vienna in 1926 and has caused no deaths since. Thank God. Starting things off in at number 10 with the Thomas Busby's chair. Otherwise known as the death chair or dead man's chair. I mean this doesn't seem like a piece of furniture that I would want in my house, but maybe that's just me. This chair is supposedly cursed and anyone who dares to sit on this chair will die shortly after. Let me give you guys a brief background on this killer chair. A man named Thomas Busby murdered his father-in-law back in 1702. For his awful crimes, he was executed by hanging, but it is believed that a chair was present at the execution carried a curse and whoever sat on it will die from an unspeakable accident. The chair remained in a hotel for many years until the owner gifted it to a museum. The museum owner wanted to display the chair but obviously he didn't want anyone to sit on it so now this cursed chair is hung high up on the wall where no one can touch it. Coming in at number 9 we have the occult museum voodoo dolls. Voodoo dolls in general are supernatural items, they're little effigies created in magical kind of practices and for the person on the receiving end, they're bad juju. Pins are placed in the doll in order to harm the subject which isn't great, not great at all. So with that in mind, a supernatural object used to invoke a curse, do you want to see the voodoo dolls from the Ed and Lorraine Warren Museum? Guys, you don't know how hard it is to say Ed and Lorraine Warren in one go, it's a tongue twister. Ed and Lorraine Warren. Little, little, little. By the way, voodoo dolls. Ah. So there is actually a noose on the neck of one of the dolls, which kind of indicates that somebody might have died. The other one has its eyes gouged out, which isn't great either. Visually scary, but also. 
actually scary. It seems that the doll collector came across these dolls and bought them home, only to find that her son's health began deteriorating. It seems that some of the witch's voodoo doll magic had been retained and it was picked up the boy as a new vessel. The collector contacted the Warrens who removed the doll, after which the boy made a full recovery. Thank goodness. However, it seems that the story continues. There was a visitor to the museum and they broke the rules by touching one of the dolls and later they were involved in a horrifying accident. Who's to blame here? Next up on this list, in at number 8 we have the crying boy painting. Can we just take a look at this thing for a moment? Ok, who the heck would actually want this painting in their house? It's just so sad and depressing. Well what makes things even worse is that this painting is believed to be cursed. This painting was made by an artist in the 1950s and for some odd reason it became famous. It was mass produced and replicated so that it could be sold around the country. However, people who hung this painting inside of their room reported that their house caught on fire for no apparent reason. But that's not even the most disturbing part of the story. Apparently the painting of the crying boy would be completely untouched by the fire. Some people say that this is a pure coincidence, but the undamaged painting hasn't been explained. We have another cursed painting here at number 7. The Hands Resist Him painting is another piece of artwork that I definitely wouldn't want in my house. I mean just take a look at this thing. Is this real life right now? What is with the crying children? I don't find this comforting or visually pleasing to look at. Well this cursed painting has been terrifying people for decades and I'll tell you why. The painting was put up on auction on eBay back in February of 2000. According to the seller, the painting carried some kind of curse. They said that the characters in the painting would move at night and that they would sometimes leave the painting and enter the the room where it was being displayed. But people also believe by just looking at the painting you feel extremely ill or have a really unpleasant experience. The Bassano vase comes crashing in onto this list at number 6. No one knows where this curse originated from or how this vase came to be so powerful. But it is believed that this vase contains a terrible curse and anyone who comes into possession of it will be doomed and die shortly after. Even with this curse, the vase was auctioned off for about $2,250 and the person that bought it died within just 3 months. Three more deaths of the new owners followed until finally a desperate family demanded that the police take it and seal it up forever. Robert the doll, you guys know this one, well he's next up on this list at number 5. This guy is just creepy. I feel like Robert the doll doesn't need a long introduction, so in short he's terrifying. He's a cursed doll that is capable of misfortune and even murder. Currently he sits in a clear box at the Fort East Martello Museum in Florida, but before that he belonged to a family until he was given away. He can apparently move across the room on his own, follow you with his creepy beady eyes, and he can also wreak havoc in your life if you disrespect him. I mean wow, Robert the doll sounds like so much fun, right? <laughs> Well, apparently there are a ton of stories about this doll trying to kill people. The fun and games are over. Sounds like we have a real life Chucky doll on our hands. Driving into number 4 we have James Dean's cursed car. This was a 1955 Porsche Spider that was cared for and loved by James Dean. You would think that this car was properly taken care of and it wouldn't be cursed, right? Well, that's not the case here. Apparently if anyone gets into this car, they would be found dead within a week. And that's exactly what happened to James Dean. He was found dead inside of it, but things get even more creepy. As the car was being worked on, the car fell on one of the mechanic's legs and crushed both of them. But the curse kept going on. When the car got a new owner, he lost control and crashed it into a tree, dying right on impact. Oh, and two people who tried to steal the car were severely injured. I think it's bad if we leave this car permanently in a park and maybe torch it. The woman from a Lem statue brings us to number 3. This limestone statue is also known as the goddess of death because anyone who comes into contact with this mysterious statue will die from unknown causes. I mean wow, let's break this statue and bury it deep in the ground where it belongs and we shouldn't mark it. And did I mention that every family who possessed this statue died? I mean yeah. 
and one of the families were so scared by the strange deaths, so they decided to donate the statue to the Royal Scottish Museum in Edinburgh, where it actually remains there today. So shortly after the statue was placed in the museum, the people who came into close contact with it died. No one has handled this statue since because of its scary supernatural powers. This item is actually placed behind a strong glass and locked where no human hands can touch it. The die box box climbs into this list of number two. These boxes are usually a wine box that is said to be haunted by a restless demonic spirit that is capable of haunting and even possessing you. The first die box box appeared in 2003 when it was purchased on eBay. Once the new owner opened up the box, a bunch of strange things started to happen. He had unexplained hauntings, reoccurring nightmares, unexplained bruises, and he can constantly smell ammonia. Other people who have come into contact with the box reported having the same awful nightmares, experienced negative health problems, and unexplained deaths happening around them. So if you happen to open up one of these boxes, you're supposed to burn it and burn it right away. The box will burn for a long time, but once it is burned, the diabuck is fully released and it can't return back to the box. Or better yet, how about we just don't open it in the first place? We lock it away forever. And topping this list, and at number one, I mean, how do we make a list like this and not include the Annabelle doll? Don't ever touch anything. And if you do, let me know. This is the worst thing in here, is that doll. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stare at it though. So you, you can take the picture, but I'm not gonna stare at it. Annabelle is actually a Raggedy Ann doll, which is now locked up in Ed and Lorraine Warren's Occult Museum in Connecticut. And I'm pretty sure they just passed away. It's pretty sad. I think it was Lorraine that passed away, so rest in peace. And that's because Annabelle was said to have caused some pretty disturbing and demonic events. Annabelle would shift positions during the day or move to a different room entirely. She also left penciled messages that said, help us. The owner also came home to find drops of blood on the doll chest and on the back of her hand. It is believed that Annabelle was involved in a chain of events that ended in a man's death. So needless to say, Annabelle is considered to be demonically possessed and that is why she's locked up in a glass cabinet.